Hello everyone, my name is Python GB and welcome back to the 10th episode of my Minecraft Survival Series. Now, for those of you guys who are new to the series, every 10 episodes I will be providing a map download from the point of the end of every 10th episode. So episode 10, 20, 30, 40, so on and so forth, there's going to be a map download. So look in the description, there's going to be one for you guys if you want to go ahead and check out the progress so far. Ah, but anyways guys, once again, thank you so much for the support on the series, very much appreciated, and keep hitting that like rating if you are still enjoying the episodes and you want to continue showing your love for the series. The fan art today comes from someone by the name of Shivanch Chabra, I do apologise if I have pronounced your name wrong, but as you can see what they have done is they've drawn my Minecraft character with a diamond sword with what appears to be Herobrin flying in the air with those absolutely godly fists of his. Oh, looks a bit deadly, huh? But thank you very much, Shivanch. I do appreciate the fan art. Obviously, fan art email is on screen. And, of course, you can send it in through Twitter if you so wish as well. Now, in today's episode, folks, we are going to be doing redstone. That is right. We are going to be doing redstone. And, more specifically, we are going to be making ourselves a fully automatic 1.12 sugarcane farm. In that, what we are going to do is we are going to utilize the brand new observer blocks that were, of course, introduced into either 1.11 or 1.10. I think it was 1.11, wasn't it? I'm pretty convinced it was 1.11. But anyways, what we need to do really quick is we need to get ourselves but one piece of quartz. We need literally one piece of quartz. Then we can do this entire farm, okay? Because I've got a little bit of a design in mind. It's not a new design by any stretch of the imagination. And it is also not a lossless design. But it is a very, very basic design. Which I imagine over time is going to produce some really, really good results. So, like I said, just need ourselves one piece of quartz. Literally one. But we'll use the fortune to get ourselves more. There we go. Two bits. That's all we needed. All I need to do now is make myself an observer, a heck ton of pistons, which I do believe I've got all the resources for anyway. And yeah, I've already got the hoppers. I need uh, chests maybe just to make a little bit of a storage system for them. But it is completely fully automatic in that it's going to test for one sugarcane layer at the top. You know how they normally grow to three, uh, three, three blocks tall. It's going to test each time the specific block gets up to that third point. It, it'll become more clear later down the line, okay? It's all right, guys. It's all right. I, I, also, I also struggle to understand these things sometimes. But uh, you know what? It's all good. It's all good. So let's get ourselves out a little bit of that. And I do believe that the crafting recipe is something along the lines of this. There we go. An observer. I need just one. That's literally all I need. Just one. We'll get ourselves a little bit of glowstone out. Again, that's all the glowstone we need. Glowstone? Redstone? <laughs> Was I saying glowstone the entire time? We need all this redstone. We don't even need repeaters or anything like that. It is the most basic build in the entire world. It, you guys can probably easily follow this. So, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to do a little bit of this. A little bit of this. A little bit of this. And we are going to make ourselves a bunch of pistons. We need 16 pistons, okay? We've got 14 right now. The limiting factor currently is going to be our cobblestone supply. So let's go ahead and rectify that real quick. And let's do this thing with you guys. One, two, three. I didn't need three. I only needed... Do you know what? I don't even care. <laughs> Always good to have more than you need, huh? Okay, sweet. So what we need to do is we need to dig out a room where the sugarcane farm is going to go. And I think the place that I'm going to put it is in here. Yeah, this seems like a pretty decently sized possible room we can have. So the doorway is going to go here. And then we need to go 16 blocks over in this direction. Okay, so two, three, four, five, six... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, this would be 13. 13, 14, 15, and then this would be the 16th and therefore final one. It's actually a really, really wide room, but it's going to give us some pretty damn good yield, I do imagine. So that is why I am making the effort and going to the trouble of digging out a 16 block wide room. It's not going to be much in terms of depth, but uh, we just want to get ourselves a basic sugarcane farm so I can, you know, trade paper. That is pretty much the fact of the matter. That is what I want to do. I want to trade a load of paper, get ourselves a whole bunch of emeralds, and then we can get, like, unlimited, like, enchanted books, right? That's freaking awesome. So, yeah, that's really what I'm trying to do here. So, I'm going to go ahead and continue digging out this room really quick, okay? And then we're going to begin on the farm itself together. 
Alright guys, so if I've done my calculations correct, I do believe that this is going to be the correct size room to get this sugarcane plantation in place. So as you can see, I've already started decorating some parts of it. Uh, we have ourselves the uh, the collection system going on here. So let's go and work on that first of all. So we've got the chests that are going to be going down there. We're going to make a little staircase going down to it. Uh, should we just use jungle wood? I mean, we might as well just go ahead and uh, just match up. So let's just do a little bit of this. Uh, I'm going to go and make some of these into slabs as well so we can, you know, get the floor going. So let's just head in here. This is going to go like so. Ah, okay, cool. So, and then of course we can just do the floor really quickly. Uh, yep, okay, cool. Let's just go ahead and do this. And then we'll work on the actual redstone part itself. It really is quite possibly the easiest redstone contraption you can make, arguably. It is incredibly easy. You should be able to follow me doing it on here anyway. Uh, okay, oh, dang it. Oh, the lack of an axe is so real. I need to, I need to make an axe, don't I? I really do. <laughs> it's so painful not having an axe. Right, okay. Boom. Let's get you placed in there, buddy. And this will just about do it. Okay, cool. So we've got the little collection system down there. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a couple hoppers going into that, like so. We're going to place in the dirt, which of course is going to be where the sugar cane is planted. And I'm just going to say this before any of you guys even think about commenting it. Sugarcane does not grow fast on sand, okay? It has been myth busted many times, least of all my good buddy Zoomavoid. It has been myth busted, okay? It grows exactly the same rate on dirt than it does on sand. It is the same, okay? So you can use either dirt or sugarcane, or, well, dirt or sand, sorry. Sorry, my, <laughs> my brain is so brainwashed with sugarcane right now, it's crazy. Jeez. All right, so there we go. That should go directly onto that. Yep, okay, fantastic. And if I've measured it out correctly, the same should go for this side. It should go exactly on this. Yeah, cool. Okay, so the collection system is in place. All we need to do now is get the pistons placed in. So uh, so we've got the first layer. This is going to be where the pistons are going to be placed. Uh, I feel like I should go ahead and uh, just do this really quick because I didn't actually need to dig out this particular layer, uh, this layer of which is going to contain the redstone. So let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, let's get the pistons back on us. Okay, and let's just place in all of these. Okay, and then all we got to do is place in all of the redstone like this. All of the redstone, all the redstone going behind on these layers right here. Obviously, it probably would have been better if I just stayed up there. All right, let's do this real quick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the observer placed. So, uh, wait, uh, that's the redstone signal. Dang it, I placed it in the wrong way. Okay, so if I go up here and then place it in this way. There we go. That should do the job, right? So if I just head down here, let's just fill in the roof once again. And then at the same time, I can also go ahead and do this. Okay. Basically, what is going to happen is once the sugarcane has grown up, or once this particular stack of sugarcane has grown up to the third platform there, or third layer, this is going to activate, thus pushing all of the pistons. So it's only testing for one column of sugarcane. And by doing that, I've managed to basically, you know, relieve myself of using a whole bunch of resources, which is pretty cool. I'm happy with that. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and start planting in these bad boys. And I'm just going to give you, uh, you know, a real world example. So one, two, three. There you go. As you can see, it just pushed them all. It filtered down to here. And there we go. We've got the sugar canes. Let's just do it again. So for the sake of clarification, this is going to detect when the sugar cane, you know, is growing up to it. And then it's going to push all the pistons out, get all of the sugar cane out. And then it's going to push it all into here. Now, once again, I should clarify, this is not a lossless sugarcane farm design. Not by any stretch of the imagination, unfortunately. There will be some losses. But, you know, if I just leave this thing to run, you know, for a long amount of time, that won't really matter all that much. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. And believe it or not, that is it done. That is it literally done. We've literally done a fully automatic sugarcane farm. That's it. That is literally it. <laughs> There's nothing else we need to do to it. Like, for real. It's crazy just how simple it is. It really, really is that simple. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, well, we have stone bricks, but I wouldn't mind trying to use some sort of other block. I'm using stone bricks just temporarily here. 
I can't imagine us coming into this room very often, in all honesty, so, you know, that's a thing. I was thinking maybe we could try to introduce some concrete into this design. Maybe we could instead put some green concrete powder behind this? But then again, we don't have any cacti yet. So, yes, no cacti just yet. Obviously, we'll be able to do that once we do have cacti. But in the meantime, what we're going to go and do is we are going to put some glass panes down to separate us from the sugar cane itself. So, let's just get some of this. 32? I don't even think that's going to be enough. Maybe we make a full stack and go from there. Alright, so, there we go. This is literally all we need to do. It really is as simple as this. <laughs> Uh, the basics of Minecraft. Sometimes the basic things are the best. Ah, uh, yeah. And yeah, it really doesn't take up much resources, does it? It's really, really awesome. Okay, so, let's get you placed in, like this. And then all we gotta do is wait for this to grow, and then the observer is gonna set up all the pistons, and then we're gonna get ourselves a, uh, a collection of sugarcane as we go along, which is quite awesome. So, yeah. Alrighty, I think what would be a good idea right now is if we were to go ahead and just put ourselves a door down, because why not? There we go. Okay, so yeah, we now got ourselves our first functional redstone build in this place, which is really, really cool. Okay, nice one. Uh, there's obviously a lot of stuff I need to be doing. For example, this is a little bit of an eyesore. We need to try and do something with that. Uh, maybe what we could do is push out this uh, walkway just a little bit and then just put the stone, like, just covering it up, I guess? So, you know, something like this, just as an example. And then we just need to push out the walkway just a little bit. Yeah? It sounds, it sounds pretty legit, doesn't it? Okay, sweet. Well, now that we've got that redstone build done, we can go ahead and move on to something else for the episode. So let me just go ahead and organize my inventory real quick. And I'll be back in just a sec, folks, for our next project for the episode. Alrighty, guys. So I decided for the rest of the episode, what we would do is start constructing a pathway from one side of the riverside walkway to the other side of the riverside walkway. So what I decided to do is I decided to get some cocoa beans because we're going to get some brown concrete pathways because I've seen a lot of people use it in their pathways and boy oh boy does it look cool. Now, first of all, let's go ahead and get ourselves some jungle leaves. Yes. I love jungle leaves especially when they're a lush green color like this one because it's just it's just a nice color. It's, it really is as simple as that. It's a beautiful color. I love it very much and I am a big big fan of it. So, let's go ahead and uh, grab ourselves all of this and I'll tell you what, while we are doing this, we are actually going to be jumping into the comment question of the video which for today comes from Arthur Blay. What was the first console you played and what was your first game? By the way, you're awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that uh, final part of the comment. But to answer your questions, the first ever console I owned was an original grey, like, big box PS1. Can you guys remember those? Some of you old school people may remember those. But uh, basically, it was a big old rectangular cuboid console and it was, it was huge. It was huge. It was slow. It was loud. But it played all of my favourite games back in the day, which, by the way, pretty much was the original Crash Bandicoot and the original Spyro the Dragon. I was never able to quite identify which game I preferred, Crash Bandicoot or Spyro the Dragon. I always thought they were on sort of level pegging, so I was never able to identify which one I preferred. So, yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. First console I owned was the original grey PS1, and then the first games I played were the were Spyro the Dragon and Crash Bandicoot, as I was saying. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but what are your guys' like, first consoles? I know some of you guys out there like, collecting consoles. I know some of my uh, YouTube friends have got like huge amounts of consoles, which is pretty crazy. But uh, I respect uh, I respect it. I respect it. Like they want to have, you know, the, the whole memory lane thing, which is fully, you know, respectable. So yeah, awesome. But uh, let me know, what, what was your first guys? Is, what was yours? What was your first console? I can't speak today. I really can't. It's actually kind of embarrassing. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, let me know. I want to, I'm kind of intrigued. So anyways, what we're doing now is we are going to start clearing this out. Okay, we're going to start clearing this out of all the trees. Oh god, there's two by two trees to take down as well, huh? Mm, I don't know, man. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that maybe what we do is try... Actually, I just thought of something. Maybe we can make a bridge going from that area there with a the lava feature over to here? I think that would be a pretty cool idea, right? I think that would be a cool idea indeed, actually. Right, okay. But anyways, in the meantime, we can start working on the pathway that is going to be residing right here. So, uh, this is very, very rough. We're not going to be, like, sticking with this. But as you can see, we're just in the process of, like, uh, getting some pathway blocks going. 
Uh, okay, and we'll go pretty much up to there. Okay, cool. So, now what we need to do is start decorating this thing and maybe roughing it up just a little bit. So, let's start off with the brown concrete powder, the brand new blocks for 1.12. Let's see how these look in comparison. Ooh! That is a nice shade, isn't it? That is a really, really nice combination of blocks going here. The path block and the brown concrete powder. That is a really, really nice looking combination. I'm thinking maybe we use it, you know, pretty sparsely. Oh, dang it. That just made a... <laughs> that made a solid concrete block. That was actually completely unintentional. I didn't actually mean to do that, but now we have... Huh. Could we maybe make that work? What do you guys think? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we could start placing some of these things down in the path itself. What do you guys think? Could we maybe make that work? Let's, uh, let's see if we can't do a little something something here with you guys. I want to try out some new designs, you know? I want to try out some new things. I want a breath of fresh air in my, in my Minecraft building arsenal, as it were. And uh, yeah, I think we could get something really cool going here. Okay, so maybe we get ourselves uh, another bit going over here. And would it be even possible to implement some proper concrete into this? Uh, nah, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no to that because there's a, it's a little bit too dark for my liking, okay? It's a little bit too dark, okay? So, uh, maybe in the meantime, we could place one in here and then maybe one, like, uh, one here. Okay, cool. Okay, nice one. And then we've got the core dirt here. Maybe we could start implementing some of this into it. So maybe we can put this next to the river. And then we can really start messing things up here. So we've got, you know, the, the broad idea of the pathway. And then it's just being roughed up just a little bit by the different blocks that we're introducing into it. So I'm hoping that this is going to look really, really nice. I'm hoping so anyway. Because if not, then, uh, you know, I'm a massive derp. And, uh, <laughs> I'll need to redo it all, will I not? So, yeah. Uh, maybe we could put, like, two coarse dirt blocks right next to each other? Yeah, that looks kind of nice. It's still got that really nice rough texture, which I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with this. I'm kind of okay with this. Yeah. This is looking really decent, isn't it? Okay. Uh, let's get a little bit more over here. A little bit more over here, perhaps. Uh, I want to try and use up all the blocks, which is pretty much what I'm doing here. Uh, so maybe we, we have one, like, in the middle here. We can have, like, one, uh, like, here. Three more blocks. Let's get one right in the corner here. Uh, let's get one here. And then the final one could possibly go there. All right, nice one. And then what we're going to do with the jungle leaves is we're going to start sparsely populating this this, uh, this edge here with uh, with some of these leaves here, okay? And then maybe we could start putting some on top of the blocks here like this. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Do you, do you think this works? Maybe we can like make some of these double tall? Eh. Hmm. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea with the whole double tall thing. I'm thinking that's working quite nicely. Okay, let's do that. All right, all right, looking good. There's not a lot of double tall things going on over here. Maybe we can rectify that really quick. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's looking pretty decent. We definitely need a little bit of lighting along here. So, I'm thinking... Here's what I'm thinking. Maybe we start implementing some spruce wood fences into it? And I really do think that that should do it. Okay, so, spruce wood fences. I'm pretty convinced I have some somewhere. Yep, there they are. And then we can start randomly placing them. What are you doing? What are you... Oh, there's a wolf chasing him. <laughs> There's a wolf chasing his skeleton. What a dum dum. You won't be able to su survive, buddy. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. All right, uh, there we go. Let's get some of you in. Maybe we could start you know, like randomly placing some of these in. Uh, yep, this is looking good so far. Maybe another fence right there. We'll make some. Oh, jeez. Hello. Hi. Hi there, Mr. Sir. Ha! You're not taking me down. You are not destroying my beautiful work that I'm putting down into this thing. That would just be rude beyond rude, dude. That rhymed. I am the next great rapper, and I. Okay, cool. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And then maybe maybe we can like bring this out here. Maybe we can get another one going there. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is looking good, isn't it? We got a pretty decent design going on here. So right, let's have a look at it from here. Uh, we need ourselves another fence right there. Should we make some of the fences double tall as well? Do you, do you guys think that would work as well? Just to give it a little bit more height. Maybe we make this one double tall? Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, maybe, like, some of the other random blocks here can be double tall? Okay. Hmm. 
liking this. I'm actually really, really liking this. I hope you guys are digging it too because uh, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying trying to do like a, a rough style because it's definitely against my usual style of just doing some sort of pattern. But yeah, I'm actually really, really happy with that. <laughs> nice one. Alrighty, guys. But anyways, on that note, obviously, uh, you know, leave your feedback in the comments area below regarding this new pathway. If there's any other blocks you think I should be introducing into the mix, let me know. But on that note, it's time to end this particular episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, and of course you are excited to see more, do of course be sure to drop a like rating and hit that subscribe button as well if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, my friends, it is time for me to bid you farewell. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.